You also on one occasion told me that you have training in Taekwondo. And one time you held the the champion belt, the world champion belt, was that am I yeah, taking that, it? That, that was years ago. Well though. years ago. <laughs> <It was> years <laughs> ago. Uh, but I, I, I want to thank you for reminding me of something. Uh, and that is this document is produced by Teresa R. Simpson, Memphis expert. And there's a rifle range called Bullseye on Lamar, is that right? Hello. Doc, did you have another comment? Take, take a couple of minutes and give us your final comment or question. In where? Okay, I'm not sure. There's con some conflicting information about that. I was told Knight Arnold area, and I also was told Orange Mound area. And, and you're, you're saying, go ahead, Doc. Yeah, well, what I'm saying is not just like stuff that's going to act. I can't just speak on the area. I ain't hearing the area. Okay. All right. Okay, Talu, speaking of lack of information. You know, Darius Stewart was murdered about a week ago, and there was a visual, and the title here says, there's still questions about the death, add tension to a sad visual. This was done last Friday, I believe it was. And there are a couple of organizations who, that have been formed to work with the litigation of this process, but don't have much information about that as well. And there's not much information about the shooting of this young man, Darius. Now, there have been some comments made by the mayor. And you know we have the, the review board that, I'm told, deals with that. Been around for a long time. So mm -hmm. this is, no. the, the police review board, no, there's no, there's no citizen, 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 citizen re review board. That's right, right that's right. Defunct, but now, what do you mean defunct? I, I'm told that there's... They're still in board. Yeah, the people yeah. still sit on the board. So you're saying yeah. that's just window dressing? Yeah. Okay, go yeah, ahead. Absolutely. Go ahead. But there there is a group locally here trying to trying to re create and re establish the citizen review board. Okay. And they're not getting good here. The local the local politicians and the mayor police chief seems to collectively reject the idea of a useful citizen police review board. The one that is established, what that was established several years ago, is totally inactive and defunct. Okay. Okay. Technically yeah. defunct. Okay. Yeah. So um, in, in Memphis we don't have a serious mind, a serious uh, approach to police brutality. In fact, we have a history of, of um, um, outrageous police brutality, okay? a history of, uh, of, of, of uh, more killings by police officers, more brutality by police officers here in Memphis than anywhere else in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. It's number one, mm -hmm. okay, the killings. Because you can't forget those nine men that were killed out there in the Shannon. You know, I mean that, mm -hmm. that's 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 the precedent. Okay, that's nowhere else in the United States mm -hmm. or in the world for that matter, where uh, nine black men lined up around a wall and all shot and killed execution style. That's the Shannon killing. We can't forget that Shannon Street massacre. Yeah, we can't. Nothing has that. been done about why, it. No, why, why would we? Why would we think that black men and boys are safe in Memphis? We can't, I mean, safe. We can't, you know, the biggest mistake that a black man can do in Memphis, Tennessee, in putting his life at risk, is calling the police. When he's in trouble, just pick up the phone, call, I need the police, and so on, so on, so on. That's the biggest mistake a black man a war can make. In Sacramento, California, a black man called the police and they ended up dead. Absolutely. And, and most of the time, Another? most of the time, here in Memphis, Tennessee, if you call the police, 
when the police arrive, the police is hostile. Mm -hmm. Automatic. Mm -hmm. You know, because I guess the training is take control of the situation and get the facts and up. So they 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 operate in a they operate a hostile environment. Mm -hmm. And even if you call the police and try to get a word in, and if you if you disobey that officer, if he says shut up, and you try to if you disobey him, you put your life at risk. And you and you call the police mm -hmm. for help. You we black men and boys cannot get help from the police department. We have to protect ourselves. We have to take our lives in our own hand and protect ourselves. Call the police after the fact. Okay. Lot, I want to go to you. And while I'm going to you with this next question, I want to, the third part of this process of obtaining your permit to carry on simply says that you pass a written exam that will be given to you upon completion of your handgun safety course. And Talu spoke about our dilemma, our perilous situation with the police department. And he also said something about here in Memphis, we've not seen any act, um, any positive action, any positive outcome or results as a result of African Americans being gunned down and killed by police officers. No one has really, no one has talked tough, has not said a loud word, nothing. So it leads me to think that he has much validity to what he's saying. Come on, Lonnie. I mean, history obviously is is his validation. Um, my experience with the course and the the written exam part. I'm not familiar with that. I know we have to have a brief test. After the, it's supposed to be an eight-hour course, but you will find that not all the classes you take will be a total eight hours. They're going to rush you through it. You know, some of it's supposed to be something you already know, and they're going to allow you to, you know, uh, train with the gun for uh, as many rounds as you purchase, and then you take a quick exam on it, um, and then you. I mean, everybody in the class is going to pass. I mean, it's almost an elementary course. Mm -hmm. But what I've noticed, though, in the class is we're outnumbered. <laughs> you know, we got outnumbered. We got women, we got older women, younger women, older men, younger men. They're getting that training, you know. And I don't see us in that, you know. Okay. But as, as what Talu said, I mean, we don't see anyone out there backing us up on a national level, on a global le level, and it's obvious when you got other cultures, other nations speaking on, I behalf, I mean, it's in, in their own words, you know, America is, is one of the most racist countries out there on how they treat the black men, and no one is stepping up to the plate. Now, we can see in history where several uh, organizations have tried to taken before the world court and one thing I noticed you know when it comes to court and uh, legislation and all of that law process is you know nationality comes into play adjudication and, and jurisdiction and when we go to the world court talking about what's going on with these black people <laughs> you know that, mm -hmm. that's not specific enough for, you know, a nationhood, uh, you know, because we, we are still classified and calling ourselves by a color, right? So in law, it's, it doesn't apply to us. And obviously we see, you know, marching and even certain organizations that we do come together and, and bring it forth. After that, after we speak our voice, then another incident happens. And we start that process all over again. We heard last Sunday we was talking about a, 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 a unjustified death mm -hmm. on a, a black citizen by mm -hmm. officer. And now this Sunday we're speaking on the same subject. So it's a it's a pattern that no, we don't have no, any national voice 
So, what, what are we going to do about okay. it? Like, a, couple, a couple of quick announcements. Isaac yes, Zeb, 901-327-2500. That line is open as well. That's right. And I think 901-327-3400 is open also. Just 25. Just 25. Just 25. Okay, anyone wanting to get in, call 901-327-2500. And one quick note about Miss Betty Wyro. Give her a call for all of your real estate and investment needs, buying, purchasing, or selling. 323-8003 or 758-5666. Omar, this part right here, number four, it says submit a handgun carry application. Proof of handgun safety course completion. Now, that's $115. And there's some more <laughs> charges in here down the line. But what did you say, Omar? In, in the nation of, Allah, of, Allah, of Islam, you can take the course. Is that right? You know how to use a gun. You know, I, I, I myself got training in ROTC in high school. Okay. And then after I got out of high school, I joined the nation of Islam. Well, actually, after I got out of college, I joined the nation of Islam. And, um, and that's why I, you know, we were told and we were taught that we don't uh, uh, catch ourselves to guns. Because so many times, black folk have killed black folk with guns. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad felt like, that's something we don't need to go to, go into. Okay. Now the brothers and the sisters in the nation of Islam, the children even are taught uh, martial arts, so you can defend yourself against anybody who might try to come against you. And we are taught that if somebody brings a gun, you are to kill them. If they come in to take your life, you are to kill them. That's just the bottom line. And I keep that close to my heart. That's why I believe in an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. I'm a Baptist Muslim still. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, but now, if you look at, I'm, I'm with Brother Jeffrey in terms of guns. Uh, America is full of guns. Like, like, like as Luke said, probably a billion. They just, I'm not counting all of them. They're not counting the ones. They didn't, they didn't go through the legal process of obtaining them. But if you look at the country of Iceland, which has 43 million people, became an independent nation in 1944, they have had one killing in their whole entire history. That happened December of 2013, where the police went to a, a building. The man there was a mentally deranged and started shooting the weapon. They know who it was. They fired it back. But most of the time, the police officers don't even carry a gun because they don't want people being shot by, by guns. They see, they see what's happening around the world. They don't want that. Mm -hmm. Although Iceland, the country, is among the top 15 countries in the world with people that have guns, but these guns are hunting rifles. Mm -hmm. They're not pistols that you carry on your side. Mm -hmm. And so, no matter where you go, when you see a police officer, there is no gun. When you are in the public, nobody has a pistol. Nobody's trying to, you know, buy bullets and, and load up in case, the, you know, the revolution comes. The mentality is completely different. Mm -hmm. In America, where you have 2.3 million black men in prison and 7 million or more people under the, the uh, criminal justice system on parole and probation, you have too many guns to even amount to. I mean, to and you can start a war inside the country with just the guns we have here. Dude, there is a war. We need we to fight the war, right? Fight now. <laughs> That's why I mean, Farrakhan has themed this seven million man um, uh, march, right. the twentieth anniversary, justice or else. Mm -hmm. right. It's the economic justice, the justice in the criminal justice system, the educational justice. We're not getting justice on any level, mm -hmm. and so we got to come together as a people across religious boundaries, social, economic boundaries, come together as a people, demand justice, and then we don't get justice or else. Right. Shut this thing down. Okay. So, now you just mentioned Minister Farrakhan. He's going to be uh, speaking here soon? Yes. Or uh, the, he's going to be speaking about, tell us about the 10, 10, 15, just briefly. It's, the 10, 10, 15 will be the Media Man March 20th anniversary in Washington, D.C. Uh, October the 10th, this year, 2015. Uh, we're looking at the the injustice that we have faced as a people. And what Dr. King talked about, what Malcolm talked about, what the Uncle Marcus Garvey talked about, nothing's changed. Mm -hmm. We're still the ones who are most incarcerated, still the ones most unemployed, still the ones who are suffering through our health care system. We're still at the bottom of everything. 
every social and economic indicator you can use, we're at the bottom of it. We're suffering. And we're suffering mm -hmm. because of white supremacy. That's right. We're suffering because of racial dis bigotry, federal bigotry, racial discrimination. We're suffering. And because of that, we have to come out of that. And so we're going to Washington, D.C. to not ask for justice, but to demand justice. And we know that black folk have $1.3 trillion worth of money that goes through this white man's economy. We, we want to have a real black Christmas. Don't buy, nobody goes shopping for Christmas. Check this. Because when I worked at Sears, <laughs> Sears didn't make any money until Christmas time. They were in the red all the way up until September. Right. They started putting things in there. With Christmas. They only made money from September to December. Shut it down. Mm -hmm. All these stores that depend on black dollar, family dollar, dollar tree, and all them other dollars. Mm -hmm. Shut them down. Don't buy nothing from them. Let me, this gun thing, Omar, what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing, this is something that African Americans have to be very careful about. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. Here, and here are three tips, Jeffrey. Tips right here. Probably. It says, ex, just what you said. Expect to spend some money. Handgun safety courses can often cost around $100. So we're at two and a quarter already. Right. Okay. Now, as does the permit application fee. So that's another fee. In addition, the cost of a weapon and ammunition can be substantial. Sure. Mm -hmm. But it says that make the most out of your handgun safety course. Not only will it enable you to pass the written exam, it will also make you a safer and more responsible gun owner. What do you need? A gun to use in training. You may own it, borrow it, or rent it. Am ammunition to use during, during training. Now, for me, the key statement in this part of number two here says, safer and more responsible gun owner, Jeffrey. Safer and does this gun conversation do something to you? Well, um, what I, I I've had this on <laughs> on, on my heart. I, I was gonna ask if I could read some lyrics to you. From, you can sing it, rap it. All right. I'll join in with you. I don't know about the other panelists, but I'll join in. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, well, well, I'm gonna do do my best on here. Go uh, ahead. Um, uh, Go right ahead. This, this comes from 1996. <laughs> uh, it was written by by Nas. Um, it, it is uh, the language I'm going to try to uh, do my best on the language change the words up. Uh, okay. Uh, it says, dang, look how uh, people use a brother. Just use me for whatever they want. I don't get to say anything. Just grab me, just do what they want. Sell me, throw me away. People just don't care about a brother like me, right? It's like I'm a gun. It's like I'm a Mother effing gun, I can't believe this. <laughs> I've seen some cold nights and bloody days. They grabbed me and bullet sprayed. They used me wrong, so I sing this song to this day. Mm -hmm. My body is cold still, for real. I was made to kill. That's why they keep me concealed. Under, a, under car seats, they sneak me in clubs. Been in the hands of mad thugs. They feed me when they load me with mad slugs. Seventeen precisely. One in my head, they call me Desert Eagle, semi-auto with lead. I'm seven inches, four pounds, been through so many towns. Ohio to Little Rock, to Canarsie, living harshly. Beat up and battered, they pull me out, I watch as people scatter, making me kill, but what I feel hasn't never mattered. When I'm empty, I'm quiet, finding myself feeling to be fired, a broken safety. Brothers place me in shells under beds. So I beg for my next owner to be a thoroughbred, keeping me full up with hollow heads. How you like how you like me now, I go blow. It's that spit that moves crowds, making every ghetto foul. I might have took your first child, scarred your life or crippled your style. I gave you power. I made you buck wild. Okay. Very good. Interpretation. Well, he's um, he's speaking from the perspective of, of, of being used like a gun, and so this is just the first verse of, of, of this song. But as you see, this this song was written in in, in 1996, um, 
and you know, it, you know, I, I like to look at coincidences because he could have said anywhere on the planet, but uh, he said uh, there's this one line that says from Ohio to Little Rock. Mm -hmm. Why did he choose Ohio? You know, uh, but as we see here recently, there's been a lot of gun violence in, in, this, in the state of Ohio. Ohio, but um, this this piece parallels where we are today. It parallels today's discussion. Is that right, Jeffrey? That's right. Um, um, go ahead. Continue. Um, just, just to go on further in the third verse, um, um, he, he says specifically, I, I'm going to try to um, do a little expert. All right. Well, here, here's a story. You know, in the second verse, I, I didn't want to read the whole song. It's not my song. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, in the second, second story, um, and in the second verse, he, he likens himself to, to a gun. He says, uh, always I'm in some spit. <laughs> my abdomen is the clip. The barrel's my dick. Uncircumcised, pull my skin back and cock me. I bust off when they unlock me. Results of what happens to brothers shock me. Um, but in the third verse, I want to, to fast forward. It says, your weeks went by and I'm surprised. Still stuck in the shelf with all the things that are outlaw hides. Beside me is bullets, two vests, and then a nine. There's a grenade in a box and a tech that kept keep crying because uh, he hasn't been cleaned in a year. He's rusty and clear. He's about to fall to pieces because of his murder career. Yo, I can hear someone coming in, open the shelf, his eyes bubbling. He said it, it was on. I felt his palm trouble, him shaking. Uh, somebody stopped him out. His dome was aching. He placed me on his waist. The moment I've been waiting, my creation was for blacks to kill blacks. It's gats like me that accidentally go off making niggas' memories. And I want to stop right there. Okay. It's that part about African Americans killing each other jumps out of that piece right there. Talu, do you hear that part of it? Sure. Go ahead. Well, you know, I. My, my we've organization. Got, we've got seven minutes. Yeah, my, my organization is Commission Against Senseless Killing. Mm -hmm. We created that organization in '93, mm -hmm. and back in '93, I, uh, 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 I told my staff that that the, prolif the proliferation of murders in, in the black community is going to just skyrocket. And there's going to always be need for an organization to address the homicides in the black community. Always, mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the reason why is because we have this one word <coughs> that has gotten a lot of us killed. Just one word. What's that? Respect. Mm -hmm. See that one word, respect, has gotten a lot of us murdered. We don't know how to use it. Mm -hmm. We don't know what it means. Okay, we just, just emulate you know, and we like we like to put this word "dis" in front of respect, mm -hmm. okay? And we we operate, we live, and we die according to that, okay. falsely, okay. you know, okay. senselessly. Yeah. You know, we got yes. There's one point. One point. The word respect and disrespect. We should never use it. It it, it literally should not be used in the black community at all. And if we don't use it, watch how many lives will be saved. Okay. Yeah, that's, that, that is a point that will come up for examination in some of our future planning sessions. <laughs> yeah. But we have five minutes. And the number to call, I think we may be able to call 901-327-2500. We may be able to take one more call. I want to go now back to you, Lonnie. Okay, briefly, quickly, what I want to say is what well, we have to uh, take into consideration with this white supremacy and all our black on black crimes. Like the brother said, it's going to be black on black crime whether we have guns or not. And they can replace the guns with whatever weapon they want to use and they still be there because the lie that's been uh, perpetuated is black self hatred. So we're still feeding into that self hatred, which he's talking about no respect, disrespect. So, you know, that part of us. And I believe this Love Power show is that's one of our objectives is to, you know, uh, show that unity amongst the brothers that can happen and self-love for the brothers, you know. So once we keep promoting that, then 
like uh, Farrakhan and all the leaders that was calling out these uh, gangs that was uh, showing dislike against each other, maybe they'll step up to the plate and start showing more more respect or uh, more love for the next brother and realize we are not each other's enemies. So. Yeah. All right, thank you. We've got four minutes left. Omar? You know, this this thing where you can have a weapon in your car. Okay. The police already have enough reason to kill us. Okay. <laughs> and, and this just adds another one. I thought he had a weapon. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the brother just pulling his pants up because he's sagging, but he, I thought he was reaching in the waistband. To get okay. A weapon. But they kill us no matter what. Uh, I got a case here with Natasha McKenna, and this lady was killed. This lady called the police because somebody had assaulted her, and when they came out, they arrested her because she was acting erratically. They took her into police custody, handcuffed her behind the back, put leg shackles on her, then they put a, a face mask because she was spitting, and then they tasered her four times, and then she ends up dead because the police killed her in the police station. That was this year, in February. Another man. Uh, who's man, I can't think of his name, Anthony Hill. He was a seven-year veteran from the Air Force. Somebody called and said there was a naked man jumping up and down off of a balcony, jumping off the second floor to the ground, back up again. When they got there, sure enough, there he was. And then when they, this, but this man is butt naked. Mm -hmm. And the police officer, we came towards me, so I feared for my life, so I killed him. He didn't have a weapon, no even pose a threat. You didn't pepper spray, spray him, you didn't, you didn't try to tase him, you just instantly shot him twice and killed him on the spot. So whether you butt naked, fully clothed, gun, no gun, hell, you're going to die. That's the bottom line. If you're black, you're going to die. We got to come together as a people and stop this man. Okay, Omar, do I hear you say, I like, absolutely, African Americans have to come together. Yes. As a strategy, as a point of self-defense, as a man. Yes. Do I hear you saying, along with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that this gun thing is not a good strategy, it's not a good idea. Not so well, let me ask you then. So the training that you all get is recommended for all African Americans, no gun, but being trained to self-defense, to defend your life, and to take a life with your bare hands. Is, is this the philosophy, philosophical defense the nation of Islam. I see you smiling. Break it down for us. Let's look at that. I'm let's be look real brief. Let's look at it. We got one minute. America came and attacked Vietnam, and the Vietnamese were under under gun. Right. America has superior military weapons. Right. But when one of the generals <laughs> interviewed after the war, and they said, "Did you ever think that you would win the war?" He said, "We never thought we would lose the war, because we had God on our side. We had right on our side." Black folk got right on their side. Black folk have God on their side. We cannot lose this war. Once we come together and, and we come together as one in one spirit, this war is over for them. We don't need a weapon. We'll take their weapon, whatever they bring. In fact, America left all kinds of tanks and bullets and bombs in Vietnam. They still got them today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's been a great session. We're, we're, we've come to the end of another great show.